Welcome everyone to Simple Man's Comics. So this is a really special occasion and we're really happy for it. A lot of guys see it on the Bolo Show. We see it on comicbookinvest.com's Indie Spotlight. We see it on uh, AKA Mr. Bolo's Instagram feed, CBSI Instagram, but we're always talking about Bad Cave Studios. And tonight we have a very special occasion where we have an interview with the PR and communications manager from Mad Cave Studios. I do want to say that if you're watching this premiere right now, mm -hmm. and you have questions for Chris, Jack, Andy, or any of us, go ahead and post in there. Ask your questions. Let's get that conversation going in the live chat. We didn't want to make this a live video because we wanted to do the premiere so we could all be active in the conversation with you guys because sometimes it's harder when you're doing a live video trying to answer chat. If you're in this premiere right now or if you're watching on replay, after the live premiere, make sure you put your comments down below so that we can get those answers for you as well. Before we bring him in here, let's introduce the other people. We have Jack DeMeo, AKA Mr. Bolo. Jack, why don't you go ahead and tell us about yourself a little bit. What's going on everybody? As he said, my name is Jack DeMeo, AKA Mr. Bolo. And I am the content manager for CBSI. I do a lot with the CBSI social media um, and I work hand in hand with the writers to help them promote and get their work out. And I'm very excited to be bringing another straight from the pages of comicbookinvest.com series right here to the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel with the Indie Spotlight series. Also joining us in this video, we have Andy Tomblin, who's from comicbookinvest.com. If you guys aren't aware, he writes the Indie Spotlight article, fantastic article. I thought I liked Indie Comics, but this guy like eats them up and like it's like a freaking cheeseburger to him. I mean, he's just <laughs> gnawing it up. He loves it. I love his article. We go back and forth all the time on conversations. Andy Tomblin. Welcome, Andy. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself real quick? Uh, thanks, Brian. Hey, uh, what's up, everybody? Um, my name's Andy, and uh, like Brian said, I write the Indie Spotlight series column over at comicbookinvest.com. It's, uh, it's it's great. Like like he said, I love it. Uh, so I couldn't ask for a better, uh, better spot over there and a uh, better bunch of guys to work with. Really, uh, really excited to have Chris here uh, from Mad Cave. Right. Speaking of Chris, everyone's like, I already know who those other guys are. I've, I've watched on Simple Man's Comics. I know who Bolo is. I've read Tom Berlin's articles. They're great, but I don't want to talk to him right now. So the man of the hour, our special exclusive guest tonight, we have Chris Sanchez from Mad Cave Studios. He's the communications and digital media from Mad Cave. Chris, welcome. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself real quick. Thank you guys, first of all, for having me. Uh, it's really awesome to be here. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm Chris, I'm from Mad Cave. I handle basically all the social media, handle like PR and just, you know, do podcasts, you know, talk to the, talk to our audience, engage our audience and, you know, make sure, uh, make sure everyone's like, you know, excited about our books and knows, you know, knows what's coming out and that, you know, gr growing the flames as they say. I, I would say you're doing your job well, because I, looking yeah. at how Knights of the Golden Sun and a bunch of other things have taken off, you do a good job at your job. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that way, because it's not, I know it's not just us talking about it. Mm -hmm. The sales figures will speak for themselves, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Let me ask you this before we get into some more Mad Cave stuff. From you personally, how did you come about this position? Was it something you seeked out? Was it something I'm saying for, I guess for people out there watching who want to get involved into like, say your job, especially working with comic book publishers, what was your path to get where you are? Uh, sure. Um, well, first off, I always, uh, loved comics. I always, you know, read them since I was a kid and I sort of that love of storytelling sort of brought me, uh, I went to school for writing, creative writing, uh, graduated and then came back home and I was like, Oh, Hey, I kind of don't want to work at Winn-Dixie anymore. Maybe <laughs> I should look for a writing job and then it's like writing job in south florida is not that great so i would i would bounce around between some jobs um i i ended up um doing social media for like a health magazine and then just like one day um, i was like oh there's this interview for this comic book company that was they were looking for like office assistant and i was like yeah i might as well um try this out i interviewed um, and they were like, oh, hey, you actually know comics. That's crazy. Like, no one around here knows comics. Oh, and you're, you know, and you, you pick stuff up pretty fast. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's try you. Let's try you out. I got hired, did a bunch of like, I basically was like admin, just helping around the office, doing a whole bunch of different stuff, uh, copywriting when they needed anything. Um, and that sort of evolved into doing the majority of copywriting and then that evolved into, Oh, Hey, we kind of need someone running social media full time. And I was like, Oh, well, you know, I can do it. And yeah, it's sort of, it was, you know, it's a little bit of a, 
Like they saw my skills and something. And this is one big thing in Mac Cave is like we we really are looking for the talent, you know, looking for talent, looking for what fits, how to make this work and make this right and put people in right positions to make them shine. Um, I think I, you know, I think I was just a part of that, a very small part. Uh, but, you know, and I just sort of fell into it um, doing doing social media stuff. And, and it turns out I like talking about comics too much. So, Chris, I kind of wanted to follow up on what you were just saying. I think as you and I kind of like having similar roles within our organization, one thing that I have noticed, which I think has attributed to Mad Cave's success, is the way that you have communicated with your audience on social media. What what has social played in a role? What kind of role has social media played in Mad Cave's kind of ascension and development in the independent comic scene? I mean, it's entire. I, it's a huge part of it because that, I feel like social media is the one place you can be direct and honest and. You know, communicate with your audience. Um, and it's such a per- huge reach. I yeah, mean, it's a huge. Yeah. It's a huge. You can communicate to everyone you know following you, and and the people who are following you are people who know you, are fans of you, or you know they're picking up your books. Um, I'm not in touch with you uh, right right through social media. I mean, that was that was our first contact through social media. So. Yeah, yeah, and and that's you know my job is to like find people like like you guys who are talking about our books, and then like you know, comment, like, you know, message you guys out and be like, hey, like, just cool, you know, it's really cool you guys are shouting us out. Maybe we, um, with this direct, you know, having a direct line of communication, like, we can both help each other out in more, in, you know, more open ways. And that's, you know, social media can do that, where you can open up these little pathways to um, people like yourselves, to, to fans, to anyone, and grow that relationship and grow um, this audience that, you know, we're seeing now is, you know, yeah a lot bigger than we thought it was and that's something you can't really you can't really see social media is very hard to like quantify and sort of like oh this works this doesn't work right um uh, there's a lot of different things out there and you just at the end of the day you just have to be honest with them and try not to be you know the guy outside the store selling you something no i'm I'm, it's just a it's a huge important part especially now that you have to have to be successful and and also to have an audience that um, you're comfortable with. So I feel like social media does. You know, sometimes social media gets a bad rap of, of you know, letting those uh, darker thoughts that you wouldn't say um, in public out. But it's also a great, com- a great place to find people who you wouldn't, you wouldn't find at your, you know, your your hometown and your like, and your local comic shop maybe doesn't have, you know, the people that you're comfortable with. And you're like, oh, maybe this guy, this guy over here, you know likes like the same book likes the same book that i do you know that 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 this local comic shop is not gonna you know there's not gonna be another person ordering the same book as me but online there's people out there that you know you can share and become friends and you know awesome conversations i can definitely relate to that because i I definitely think that that's something that cbsi comicbookinvest.com we were really founded on speculators a lot of time resellers we get kind of a bad rap in the market so CBSI, the original Google Plus site, and now building into comicbookinvest.com really was a place for us to come together and be able to talk about what we were doing comfortably with like-minded people who were kind of into the same things and, and kind of chasing the same kind of carrot in the in, within the market. And um, so I, I can definitely relate to that with trying to find your community on the internet. I think you guys have done an amazing job. Because I think that, you know, that's what we have seen is your social presence has really made a lot of people aware of the types of books you guys are releasing. And we're seeing that momentum now build with each release. One thing I really like is that you guys are also really approachable and respond. And, you know, you respond to people's questions or you respond to people if you catch people tweeting or posting about your books, you share it. So you definitely give the attention and, and show love to people. So. It, your awareness on on social is is definitely obvious and there's picking up one customer at a time getting getting people involved i mean that, that's what you're doing i mean if somebody posts a, a pickup i mean you can look at your your story and whether it be midnight three in the morning if you you see it it's yeah. your owner you talk about dedication i mean uh, you you got it I, uh, that's, yeah. that, that's 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 what you got to do though when you're when you're building a company like that and I mean, a lot of people, if they were just coming into it, they're probably like, oh, man, Mad Cave's been around forever, but 
you guys are brand new. I mean, that's 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 saying something. But I say brand new. I mean, yeah. it, relatively in in the in the I'm, whole scheme of things, you are. I mean, we are. We're like sure, like we've been around for like four years, but those four years were really four years in the industry. They were like you know, three years yeah. not even selling books or like selling books only online or you know, I barely at that. So it's yeah, it, it, it's you know, we were we were we were a company, but we you know, it was just it was literally hard. it was literally just this past year with Diamond that we could reach this audience, and and even then, like just this past couple months with Nights or which has just been an oh, eye-opening experience of, of uh, we're really, really like learning every day. Like, oh, this is what this is like. This, these are, these are good problems to have, but there are problems we didn't have a year ago because we're at the a new level now. Yeah. And it's wow, exciting. Yeah. It's super exciting. We're hoping we to continue that on with um, our next books. And uh, the one thing we, we always knew is that we had quality books, which so is, you know, we want to get them in the right people's hands. That's uh, that's it. I mean, you uh, you guys got quality leadership too, and I think that's uh, that's a driving force. Yeah. Talk about how y'all kind of came about about the like the history of Mad Cave, uh, where where it all started. Uh, well, Mad Cave it all starts with Mark. Mark London, um, it's it's his baby. It's his passion project that he's been wanting to do forever. He, um, sort of grew up reading comics. You know. I love the storytelling, lo- loved just stories in general. And as he was going through um, his, you know, working life and building, you know, building a family, he was, and came to like a comfortable part of his life. He was just like, I want to do this. This is something that he's, you know, this is, you know, Mac is something he's talked about doing forever, but no, no one really sat him down and told him, Hey, stop just shut up and do this thing um until his wife did uh, uh, driving force yeah his wife was basically like yeah just shut up please do the thing so you don't drive me crazy um and so he did it uh yeah and uh he's he's from columbia so he uh sort of started uh the design team and sort of the artist uh branch in columbia um and sort of has a little network and then um he well, he lived in and he sort of lived in Miami and then sort of started the marketing sort of PR and like organization uh, wing here in Miami. And that's sort of how, you know, it, 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 it is. It still is to this day is um, Matt Cave is sort of his, his baby and his passion and the way he can tell his stories. And now it's built on um, with our talent search just last year. Um, and you're going to see just this year, like new writers and new artists that, you know, didn't come from Mark and these stories that are their ideas that were born from Mad Cave, but that other writers and artists took on and became their own. And it's awesome to see. What's your re- working relationship like with uh, Mark? Are you guys like, or I guess Mad Cave in general, because uh-huh. you guys pretty, pretty close, pretty all around each other a lot. Or, I mean, Oh cause... yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a hectic family here at Mad Cave because it's a, it's it's us in the office like just talking comic stories talking marketing it's every everyone has a different hat to wear at any given moment um for building marketing plans and yeah it's it's a close um it's a close-knit um communication especially with mark mark is not this like overbearing like i am the ruler of the land no he's he's just this guy you can just talk to this nerd huge just (laughs) nerdy guy who's just like talking about um, he was just talking. He just sent me a text message today talking about a, like a D and D mini that he bought. <laughs> and I'm just like, Mark, come on. <laughs> uh, that, that brings me into my next one now. So we okay. saw me and my my girlfriend Lauren. We saw a post on Instagram. Y'all all, all around the table done D and D in it up. So I mean, is that like it just breaks out or, or what 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 happens? There? So to to explain that, uh, I am the resident D and D nerd. Um, yeah. I've been I've been table topping and uh, playing D and D for you know years now, um, and Mark Mark uh, played when he was uh, you know a young kid, um, and the rest of um, the rest of the office are you know they're nerds like us and they're like they're always interested but it you know it's hard to get five four people growing up yeah. you know that are like oh yeah sure let's go and pretend to be elves uh, killing a dragon right now <laughs> but I mean that's awesome I mean, the CEOs in there with you. You know, I mean, that doesn't happen anyway. Yeah, we had um, the idea come up of, because 
another thing is uh battle cats is so dungeons and dragons inspired so fantasy inspired so they that idea stuck in mark's head it was like oh maybe you should like run this thing you know then I, then he was like oh hey you want to run this thing for me i was like yeah sure mark i could do that <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, he, he seems like a heck of a guy to work for. I'll, I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so yeah, we just ran a game, and and apparently now it's gonna be weekly because, you know, they all loved it, and I'm like, okay, cool, that's another weekly game I have to prepare for. Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, you you don't you don't see that nowadays. I mean, that's uh, that's something special. I mean, I, I think that's that that's something to attribute to the success of y'all's company. I mean. It's a, it's one big family there, and uh, it takes everybody working together to, to make it. It seems like. Yeah, that's that's all it is. It's it's you know we're all trying, we're all passionate about like making this work and making sure you know these books are the best of quality and make sure they get into every, you know everyone who wants to read is their, their hands. You know, that's everyone is there for a simple goal of making sure Mad Cave is successful and not even just in a monetary sense, but in a community sense and make sure we're building something that you know lasts is there going to be any mad cave larping events uh we're not we're not there yet <laughs> we're not there yet i don't i don't think i don't think some people in the office will will uh agree to that there's 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 staying around the table that there's you know taking a great axe to someone <laughs> legit um, <laughs> there you go. i don't know uh but yeah no they're it's we're and also it's a game of you know creativity and that's what Mad Cave is sort of built on this um, driving force of creativity that we you know put in our books, put in our marketing, put in put in everything we do. It's like being a, a small indie company, an indie publisher, you you have to have a certain mindset and like you 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 have to go into it thinking that you have an edge over everybody else and. It, it's been said a lot. I know the first place I heard it was James hike over with the scout, but Marvel and DC aren't really noticing the revolution that's kind of happening in the indie world. And, and like I say, you got to have the right mindset. So it, as an indie company, like what, what do you feel is your edge over those two bigger companies? See, I, hmm. at least for me personally, I, I love indies. I, I, just love them to death. I but I also have you know a lot of uh, but I also follow creators that go to Marvel and DC that make amazing stuff and right. So the edge edge I would say is you know there we have uh, more freedom to do what you want, try more different things, um, like try a biblical fantasy story, say for yeah. example. Right. That that probably is not going to fly at the offices of Marvel and DC. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of uh, that's sort of like the edge we have that we have um, we have this sort of free lane that we could just go through and be like yeah sure this crazy idea that Mark has throw it out there and it's like oh yeah sure if we if there's a story there let's find it let's let's work it out see if it becomes something um, important and I think that's kind of what is leading to the revolution because there's so much that there's so many of these properties right now that everybody wants a story everybody's looking for for anything right now because of and if, if you've got something that, that people are enjoying that people are jumping on these co these mo movie companies and they're taking notice because if you've got these streaming companies like netflix hulu uh amazon that it's just con it's it's more content that's just being consumed now than than it was ha has been ever yeah. and i think that's that is that's a big thing. So you, you definitely hit on it. And, and the freedom, I mean, I think you saw some of that this week in uh, releasing Faithless One. You know, I mean, let, let Marvel or DC try something like that or, or what y'all are doing with the, the epic Bible story. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. They, they, they won't touch it with a 10-foot pole, you know, and, and if they don't wake up, <laughs> they, they could be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I, by the way, I'm so excited to read Faithless. Oh my god, I am <laughs> so excited to read that book. Brian yeah. Asmarla doing erotica shit. Oh man, I know, I know right? Um, a lot yeah. of it more apparently because it's moving. <laughs> I so excited. Uh, I have it upstairs. Uh, but I still think there's a lot of great books in Marvel DC. Uh, and a lot of creators actually getting the chance to play with different stuff and being. Awesome, like Mr. Miracle. That just that's an insane book. Yeah. That's 
weird and challenging and you see it's like not a, a, a regular dc book or even the unstoppable wasp is a, a story about this character this hero's bipolar disorder it's this weird sort of thing to to attack and do in a superhero book and i think should there be more of that you know for people like me yeah but again they have you know they have shareholders and people are there and depending on different things they're playing safe they can't really take the chances but i think it's a different world I, I, yeah it's a different world it's a different world different mediums and i just think yeah, there's i just think comics are uh, right now in a great place where you know there's great stories being told great ideas and a vast amount of like different people making them than they were 20 years ago and that's i think what's leading to this sort of revolution that you're talking about this this the the diversity between creators and the amount of people is like oh yeah like comics are a good place now for me to actually tell my story you know bring this idea that i had in my head that it would that no movie studio would take a chance on because it would probably cost way too much money oh i think you hit, i think you hit the nail on the head too where you said like the independent scene is also influencing the the big two because we're seeing names like donny cates make his mark on the independent scene and then move to Marvel and you're not seeing a drop in quality and you're still seeing him take chances with his storytelling and have that kind of indie influence on the big two. Uh, the beauty of the indies is you guys, like you said, you have the freedom to tell the stories you want to tell. And then again, as we also talked about is the accessibility is that, you know, somebody can get a hold of you. I don't, I don't know that readers can get a hold of the, the PR director for Marvel. And that gives you, you know, that advantage is that you can connect on a one-on-one -on -one level with the reader. But I, I think that you hit the nail on the head with Knights. I think that's a perfect segue into talking about Knights of the Golden Sun, which has been, you know, just a landmark success for you guys. Huge success that really, really came out of nowhere for like we know we knew the quality was there. We knew that the, the book is good. We knew all of this. Like we knew the story is good. We knew the book is good. But how would a biblical fantasy series like this from an indie company from us fly with uh, readers and audience? And from the first two issues, we thought, oh, well, like this was, a, you know, this was nice and, you know, it was a good try and stuff like that. But then once issue three hit and then issue four, and we were like, whoa, what, what's going on here? Uh, what's, what's, what's this? You know, people start talking about it. And when I first saw it in the solicits, I immediately thought Diablo the game Diablo and how much I love that story, especially with the Archangels. I saw it. I was interested in it. Of course, I put it in my weekly picks video. I think Andy had it in his indie spotlight. I think that's one book that uh, a lot of people went to the comic book store and after seeing it, kind of people talking about it or putting it out in some of their suggested readings for the, and they'd go to their comic book store and they didn't, they didn't see copies. So I think that not seeing copies. And then of course you have the speculator, uh, Wednesday Warriors going, oh, this must not be hard, easy to find. So they're going out and buying copies that they can get. And I think that combined with the word of mouth and how good the story was, it all just combined and just kind of uh, storm. And then it just kind of grew from there. And then the issue two came out and it was just as good. It didn't have any drop off. And, and from a story perspective, from reading it, so you're like, wow. And then then word of mouth from that point on even increased even more. That brings me perfectly to, uh, to my question of, you know, obviously we at comicbookinvest.com, you know, we cover the secondary market and Knights was a book that initially, a as Brian said, he highlighted on his weekly picks and he talked about it in the Indie Spotlight series. It was on the CBSI Bolo list in the Reader Buzz section as a book for readers to keep a lookout for. And I think Knights is a prime example of why we talk about the value of the Reader Buzz section and the value of reader books, because it's a book that grew organically through readers and readers picked it up loved it and kept set, spreading the word we heard nothing but good things about knights but at some point the speculators got on board when they started seeing those ebay prices so my question to you chris is when were you guys aware of what knights was doing secondary market and how did the mad king team feel about it well we first became aware when it was uh, an ebay book for like 30 bucks and then it rose to like 80 which was ridiculous we were all like, what are what are we doing here? Like, what is this? Uh, that's when we first were like, okay, there's something here now. And as far as how we felt, we're, I mean, it's 
it's people who are excited about comics. Like there's people who live and breathe comics. And that is, you know, that is whether they're you know reselling or whatever. There's just people who uh, found our book. You know, it's the fact that people were talking about the quality and people were talking about how this could actually be something. And, you know, there's, there's actually some sense, some sense of um, the people behind it cared about it. Hey, this is, you know, this is pretty cool. And, and and we saw that it translated to the people who go to their comic shops and actually talk to their LCSs and be like, oh hey, that's did you hear about this book? That's you know, um, eighty bucks or whatever. It eventually went down, but that happens. If it was still eighty bucks, I would be like, what what are we doing here? It's really I I we come to like we come to really really enjoy that aspect of you know the speculators and sort of seeing seeing how it, they react because they're it's a it's a different market and it's right. it's a very um interesting market to um l- look at it and see and see like oh okay that's how they think about this book how that's how they see this world and it's really it's really I, we owe a lot honestly to them of, for our of, for the success of nights and not ju- for noticing the quality and noticing that this is something that you can get behind and actually invest in Right. So real quick, again, those for that are watching this during the premiere and you aren't participating in the chat, make sure you participate in the chat. We're all in there right now. We're here to answer your questions. Um, if it's a Mad Cave question, I suggest asking Chris. Yeah. But definitely make sure. In fact, Chris, how about you do this? You're the king of Mad Cave Social. Why don't you give us a hashtag for them to use? Put it in the comments. Put it in. Tweet this out. Put Use the hashtag there. Instagram. Give us a hashtag and any of us out see it. We'll all share it on Comic Book Invest. I'll share it on Simple Man's. And you'll share it in any spotlight. And we'll just get the word out about this. So, Chris, before we go further, do you have a, a nifty hashtag we could use for this show? Uh, Comics with a Mad Twist is our hashtag. There we go. That'll do it. So, hashtag Comics with a Mad Twist. And like I said, Anywhere on social, if we find it, we'll we'll go ahead and, and reshare it out. You mentioned pull box. I've never been a big pull box person. I've always either called and pre-ordered what I wanted or gone in at opening and picked up what I needed. But Third Eye is a big comic book store. They're up in Annapolis. They have a smaller one down near me so that they don't carry as many books that I kept constantly missing out on Mad Cave titles. So I went down there in a pull box and I subscribed to pretty much even the, the ones that if Battle Cats Volume 2 wasn't even announced yet, but Volume 1 ended, I put everything on there. So if something comes back out again, I'm making sure it's going to be in my pool box to get because that way I don't have to go. Hey, do you have this? And they're like, no, we'll call it Annapolis and see if we can get it down here. They're great. They do that all the time, but I don't even have to worry about that now. I know it's going to be in the pool box for me to get. All of a sudden, my pool box is all Mad Cave titles, one other indie company, the two Conan titles from Marvel. Conan Barbarian and Savage Sword of Conan. I can't recommend enough what Brian's talking about is talking to your LCS about these um, these independent titles, but especially from publishers like Mad Cave. A lot of times these LCSs, they're nervous about ordering a lot of copies of new publishers. They haven't seen the sales track record. So it's important that you let your LCS know when you're looking for something. Reach out to them. Let them know books that you're trying to get in because they've got a lot of releases coming out still too. We've got... Um, just coming up this week, we've got Knights of the Golden Sun number six releasing on Wednesday. Uh, sure to be a reader buzz book. And also, I've got right here, Knights of the Golden Sun number one, the second print, which releases this Wednesday as well. So any of you guys who missed out on that first print, you're going to have a second chance to get another uh, copy in your collection. Right. Speaking of Knights of the Golden Sun number one, um, you guys have probably gotten approached for quite a few. There's been quite a few of. Uh, Exclusive variants you guys have been approached with, that, right? One of them, of course, was us at comicbookinvest.com. We love partnering with Mad Cave. Knights of the Golden Sun, that was a great a great variant for us. And I noticed they, they had a couple other ones, right? Yeah, for Knights, we had a um, we had your CVSI uh, variant, and we had a Vanessa Del Rey variant. Right. that we She was a local to Miami, and we sort of met her at a, at a local shop here, and we just got to talking, and we love her art I, I i can't get enough of her art her art is insanely good to me um so we were like yeah like let's let's see um and we felt that knights worked perfectly with her style 
Um, and so we were like, hey, you know, what what about a virgin wraparound? And she was like, cool, awesome. And, I, and we were like, oh, man, this is so cool. And how can people get their hands on that book, Chris? Uh, we just recently launched, actually, a Mad Cave uh, store um, coming from our website. That's uh, sort of where you can get all your physical copies of Mad Cave. Um, we just launched it last week. And by the way, we just launched it last week. Jeez, that would wild as well. <laughs> Oh, what? I know all of us in CBSI were picking up copies from you guys for sure. Oh man, that was a wild week. We were like, oh, on on Wednesday we have how many orders? Sixty? What? Well, that's why I, I want to make my I want to make my personal pitch for you guys. Um, the reason, guys, I actually have this second print ahead of the release date is because I had tried to order some first prints and they were sold out. And Mad Cave actually reached out via email offered to replace them with the second prints at the same price because they were on sale ahead of release date. So yeah, I wasn't able to get my first prints, but instead of just telling me, oh, well, you're out of luck, they've actually made a, a very fair offer that I'm very happy with as a collector and speculator. Yeah, and that was something that we, honestly, we did account for on our end. We were like, oh, you know, we'll get a couple orders here and there, but then like a little Wednesday morning, we're like, wait, 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 60 orders? What? What? Uh, yeah, I saw maybe. so many posts on Instagram, yeah. like from Mad Cave saying their stores up, and then people just reposting it, and, uh, and all across yeah. social. I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, we don't have that many books. Uh, <laughs> what's going on here? But we thankfully just that, like, just had like Thursday or something. We got the second prints in, and we we're like, okay, let's let's see what we can do here. And that's another thing. Like, we're always looking out for the fans. If something ever happens to the books, if ever shipping thing, um, sometimes they get messed up. And you know, we're happy to replace it if we can or figure out what's um, the next alternative and best alternative um, for you to get your books. If if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. We'll refund you the money. But, you know, we want you we want you, know, you guys to get your books and know that Mad Cave is always there to look out. I've gotten books come up and people like not help me. And I was like, OK, this 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 is the worst. Um, yeah. So we never want to be that company. We always want to be the company that's like, OK, let's we'll move heaven and earth. Uh, no pun intended, uh, to get the books out and help you guys out as much as possible. Yeah, customer service is excellent. Um, you know, just reaching out to the customer and letting them know that, listen, I'm not able to take care of, of your order, but I, I want to offer you something. As a customer, that means a lot. And coming from the retail industry, that that's just excellent customer service. I can vouch for that, too. I, uh, Chris has been on top of everything I've ever asked, like I say. Morning, noon, night, when and whenever. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, you, don't, you don't sleep much, do you? That's my lack of social life and my lack of sleep. Yes. So we definitely want to put we definitely want to put the bolo out on the Mad Cave web store. Um, be sure to check that out, guys. Um, yeah. Brian and I over at the Bolo live stream, we we quite often talk about the value of hitting up these indie publishers web stores. There's so many deals, so many books that are sold out. There was actually a window of time when the CBSI Knights of the Golden Sun variant was available on the Mad Cave web store, which obviously we sold out in 27 hours. So people were able to get. Um, I know uh, we'll talk about this book a little in a little bit, but uh, they have the Honor and Curse CBSI variant as well. So, you know, be able to be looking out for future offerings from the Mad Cave web store. And if you miss a book at your LCS, be sure to give them time and check out their their web store and see if they load it up on the web store because it's a great opportunity for a lot of you that are reaching out to us at CBSI and letting us know that your LCS maybe isn't carrying the books or isn't carrying enough of the books. It's a great alternative and they're a growing company and they're gonna do they're gonna get things right with your order. And I'll put a link to their web store in the description of this video. Yeah, I mean, and w that was something that we've been working on for a while because we've we've always heard that whether at conventions or um on online is like oh where can i can i get this because again yeah lcs uh, the it's very important to go to your lcs and like pre-order a book if you if you're interested in it again that's um hard to ask because it's like oh how i want to pre-order this book that i don't even know what it is yet at this point um that's why we try really hard to get preview pages as soon as possible while they're while they're solicitations and why we think um, with us growing and our reputation growing, you can see that we are a company that puts out quality products and doesn't, you know, doesn't cheap out on anything. We, that's why we think our, you know, our 
paper quality and everything we want to be as high quality as possible to make sure that those four dollars that you're going to spend on the book are well worth it all right i gotta go back to nights for a minute well one 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 thing where, where did it come from i mean i know it came from mark but i mean what where, where does a story like that come from i mean is it, it's not just out of the blue <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's a very similar story to how the company started. Mark really, really wanted to make something special, actually, for his wife. And sort of his wife was his inspiration for it. It was sort of their um, sort of beliefs and sort of what they wanted to tell um, by this like grand epic Angels is Demon story. And it's something that he wrote, it, it, he wrote it for her and sort of this epic story basically for his wife. And he was just like, well, you know, let's try to make it, just try to make it um, something special. And, and that's, you know, that, that's really where the, the, the idea of Knights came from. So where did Mauricio Villarreal come from? Like, did he, were they friends? Did he know him already? How did he get the artist for the book? Uh, Mark put an ad in a newspaper. Awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. If that uh -huh. isn't. If that isn't the oldest thing, uh, like, that, that, but that's where you know it's fate, man. Yeah. I mean, something that, that's yeah. talented Mark, that comes out. Mark put it out in the newspaper, and Mauricio answered it, and they're like, "Oh, hey, you're pretty good at drawing. Let's let's make a book together." That's awesome. That is awesome. But Mark said he was kind of like uh, one of the first ones in the in the zoo, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was uh, when Mark was building the company and building it's like instead of um, and it was like, oh, hey, let's actually build a company, not just like a comic. Yeah. Um, let's actually make this out there. He was yeah, one of the first ones in and one of, you know, one of a great artist. And we were like, we couldn't deny his talent. And it was something that's like, OK, this special this story that's you know special to me, I needed a special artist to come up with it. And he his scale and epicness and sort of beauty that he lends to these pages is a huge reason why this book is you know as special as it is so is there always plan uh, to keep it um like the smaller volumes or do you think there, there's any plans to have an ongoing mm. series or is it get is it better do you guys just like telling the stories in those volumes and those chapters because i noticed there's a trend a lot of comics are kind of moving towards that when before you look at it almost like a mini series and people would kind of shy away from it, but you're seeing that trend now where stuff's coming out and, and arcs, but they're just the next chapter in the storyline and, and people are eating it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's sort of, that's what we built in to um, be consistent and make sure we get our books out on time. Um, Cause that's a huge thing with retailers, huge thing. And that's something we never wanted to do. Like if we we've never been late, um and that the huge thing of that is we we you know we never had an ongoing um uh, and we have these arcs planned out and we have these books planned out to make sure that it's like okay we are for sure hitting the state no come to, like we are making the state um and keeping up this quality and keeping up the storytelling and keeping up all this and with that that was that was decided that like yeah let's do these arcs and with Knights, Knights actually has uh, two more arcs planned out. Uh, I don't know how many, I don't think it's been decided like how many issues each arc is, but they're like, you know, five, seven, something like that. Um, That's actually and, really smart because you see a lot of, especially indie companies that have these great titles that come out. And then you mentioned stuff being late and they just lose a, a lot of that momentum. There's so many titles coming out each week that you get overlooked and it's hard to gain that back. So, yeah, I think that's really smart to have in those, those arcs or volumes that way that makes a lot of sense yeah and it's not just like losing momentum or losing the trust of readers it's losing the trust of the retailer and that is huge like we always stress um that the retailer is um just the one of the most important things in the industry and they they're they're what hold up this industry um i don't know any other like really successful direct market uh quite like the comic book industry um and so we definitely like being late with a with a retailer is just the worst thing ever and that's something we never wanted to do so with these arcs planned out and with what we're doing we feel like we're, this is something we can um until we start like exponentially growing um this is something we can maybe like down the line you know maybe we can start seeing these on some ongoing something 
something more ambitious um which actually what we're seeing actually now later this year when we have multiple books and even with honor and curse with honor and curse and knights of the gone sun sort of releasing simultaneous not not releasing simultaneous but sort of having books out at the same time where you have honor and curse three releasing um just a week after night six um that's something we didn't do last year but something that we're starting to do early this year and later down the later we're, when we're going to have actually like simultaneous releases and multiple books at the same time um that's how we're starting to grow um and but still making sure we hit those dates still making sure the quality of these books are as perfect as possible that brings us to a good point we've been talking about knights of the golden sun you talk about honor and curse number three is getting ready to come out let's shift and talk about that book for a minute great title it's getting a lot of attention but i still think it's kind of riding under knights of the golden sun do you see that also growing as well i mean i've read the first two issues absolutely love it I think Mark London's got like the freaking Midas touch with, it, with whatever he's writing right now. Yeah. Keep doing it. But yeah, um, I'll also let Jack and Andy chime in here. I mean, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, he, I, I think Chris would know more. I mean, he, he knows all the, the, the sales numbers probably more than we do about which one's performing better. But I mean, I, I think you've got two totally different titles. I mean, they, they, they couldn't be further apart. And the sales on them are just, I mean, they're, they're, they're steady, you know, I mean, you, one is sold out. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I don't, I, I don't know how further far down the line. I don't know what all the sales did, but uh, like I say, I, I, I think you have two totally different books, two huge hits. You've got one, two common denominators and publisher and, and, and writer. Uh, you, you got some good stuff going on. I mean, you, you can speak more to that. Then. No, yeah. Well, we what we saw of Honor and Curse is another success. I, we again, we don't know if like obviously the uh, success of Knights um, helps, and it obviously it did. But we also didn't see something like um, with Honor and Curse one and two. Yeah, they're sold out. The first printings of them are pretty much gone. Um, and we just ran ex- a pretty successful launch uh, sort of solicitation for Honor and Curse number one um second second printing and we're just this week we uh announced the second printing for uh honor and curse uh number two that's also going to second printing and so that's never happened before um and we're, again we're seeing orders go up every every uh issue which is insane and second that, printings are different covers right you guys don't do like some companies do where the second printing is the same cover it's just the color the the color of the the title might be different or something like that yeah, they're different covers. Yeah. They're they're different covers. It dri- you know, it might drive some people would say, but we want to you know still be known for quality and still be known for like okay, this is uh might not be like a completely different product, but it's something that um, people can be like okay, this is still something special. This is the second printing isn't just a second printing. It's like oh, this is a new cover. The success of Knights obviously helped Honor and Curse, but I still you know I still believe that. The quality of Honor and Curse uh, sh- you know, shine through, and people, the word of mouth that people are not just talking about. Oh yeah, you know, we bought it just because uh, Knights of the No, we we bought it and we're continuing to buy it because this is a good story. <laughs> so I haven't heard one bad thing about anybody that's read Honor and Curse, and just like Knights of the Golden Sun. I mean, so that that speaks volumes right there. I mean, you, you've got some people out there that are quick to jump on the uh, the hater. Haterade, but uh, no, they. Uh, I, I haven't heard any, so I mean that's uh, that's that's a good thing. So did did Mark have to do any um, extra research for for that type of genre, mm-hmm. or is he does he have experiences from it? I mean, how did that title kind of come about, and what made him write about it? Uh, yeah, Honor and Cur- oh, Well, for all of, all of his series, like just like any uh, good writer, he researches them extensively, um, especially with knights and his um, knights with his like. You know, sort of the religious aspect of it. I mean, research it, but it will find and curse. It's a period piece, and that period needs to be you know as authentic as possible. And that's what we we try to do. And we all you know sort of when either marketing or building the book, um, he he went into extensive research for like what are the different clans, what are what's going on in different areas of this. And he's um, his fascination with it comes from he's just always he's been fascinated with uh, you know Japanese story storytelling and stories and folklore old samurai movies um he's a big like pop culture sponge um especially from 80s and 
90s sort of growing up in that era. So for those watching that aren't familiar with, say, Honor and Curse, can you tell everyone about what's the story about? You kind of touched on it there. I mean, everyone's going <laughs> to know that it's uh, ninjas. For those that are yeah. like, oh, well, I have no idea what the book he's talking about. How would you describe Honor and Curse for those watching? Uh, it's a supernatural shinobi story about this orphan who sort of you, you know, you go through his life. Uh, you know, you go, he wants through his traumatic uh, past and then he grows up. He wants to be, so he sort of gets raised by this clan of ninjas and then he wants to become the head ninja. But um, throughout this uh, journey, he discovers that all is not as it seems as he's been sort of possessed by this uh, demon spirit. And sort of influencing his actions and, and giving him power, but sort of turning him, uh, turning him a little bit uh, renegade and evil. And you know, growing these relationships with different people and how the demon spirit in, inside of him um, reacts to it. Right. So yeah, I've read the first two issues. Can't say enough good things about it. So if you haven't picked it up, definitely make sure you try to get to, especially with the second prints coming out. Um, also, if you do want a copy of Honor and Curse Number One. Jack, you want to talk a little bit about something they might be able to get a hold of? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, you guys right now can head to comicbookinvest.com and get our exclusive Mad Cave Studios CBSI Honor and Curse number one variant featuring the art by the artist we spoke of, Mauricio Villanreal, who does the uh, Knights of the Golden Sun book. This is his uh, first cover that he's done for Honor and Curse. Um, we have really enjoyed the artwork that he has done for us on the two books. As you can see, I've got the Knights of the Golden Sun book right here, um, which he did the cover for. We have really enjoyed our working relationship with Mad Cave. Uh, the process of beginning our variants uh, began with a conversation between Andy and I, where I kind of just posed the question of when Knights was taking off and hitting that about $30 plateau that Chris spoke of, I reached out to Andy and just wondered, would they open the press back up on Knights of the Golden Sun? Because we were getting so many people reaching out to us, letting us know that they wanted this book and couldn't get their hand on this book. And there hadn't been a solicitation yet for a second print. So what started with just a question has now become two variants. We knew, and you guys talking about Honor and Curse, we knew as soon as Honor and Curse was released, that we wanted to jump on doing an exclusive variant for Honor and Curse because we already saw the the similar buzz that we see with Knights of the Golden Sun. And in full disclosure, we held um, Honor and Curse off of the hot 10 list initially because we had already begun production of the variant and we were concerned with some transparency things. But truthfully, the book was just as hot on release date as Knights of the Golden Sun was. So I would love to know, Chris, from you guys, what have you guys seen uh, uh, as far as the secondary market comparison between the two books, um, are you guys seeing some of the same success with Honor and Curse, or is it more of a slow build? No, it, right from the jump, it sold out immediately, and we were. It was. It was. Knights. Knights was more of a slow burn than Honor and Curse mm -hmm. was. Knights. Knights took issue three. Ish. I mean, issue one was still was a huge book, but we so didn't see like sort of the effects of that. Up until about issue three, Otter and Curse, we immediately went to second print on it because it, after the first week, we started getting messages of like, where can I get this book? And we were like, go to your LCS. And they're like, they only ordered five and they're sold out. And, we're, and we got we got that message. I don't know how many times I read that message um, in those first right. three weeks. And we immediately were like, oh, 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 Diamond reordered and we had to give them how many? Oh, cool. Awesome. We're, we're out now. I, I don't even have a copy. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, okay, we need to go to second print on this. Um, and then immediately with issue two, same thing happened. Uh, Diamond's out, we're out, and people are still asking for the book. The, the numbers on the first day, there were over 65 sales on eBay with an average sale price of $18 plus shipping for Honor and Curse in the first day. I mean, that's I mean, that's... You, you don't see that like right? with with indie companies i mean small press books i mean you you see 10 to, to 20 move in a day and that's that's yeah, that's that's doing it you know you you move 60 70 books in a matter of of 2 days right there you know so it's uh well, that that speaks volume well and, and simple Men's comics family and cbsi nation i think that you guys need to take note of that because we're talking about honor and curse right now sitting right now at about a 10 to $13 book on eBay. Um, and when you compare it to Knights, you were, 
what you gotta listen to what Chris said and what Andy said. We're seeing uh, very similar sales totals out the gate, but right now, Honor and Curse, the first print, may be really undervalued right now on the market because it's sitting at a much cheaper price than Knights, but yet moved just as fast on release day, just as much demand, and is just as dried up on the market. So a uh, real suggestion right here from AKA Mr. Bolo is be on the lookout for those Honor and Curse first prints and to go ahead and pump back to the website, check out comicbookinvest.com because we've got a low print exclusive still in stock on the site. Which we're partnered with on uh, Mad Cave because Mad Cave has some copies to sell as well. Isn't that right, Chris? Excellent. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we just put them up on the store uh, like yesterday, I think. I know comicbookinvest.com, $2 of each sale is being donated to St. Jude. And shipping is also covered in it. Either way, mm-hmm. you're supporting both great people at comicbookinvest.com, but we also want to give love to Mad Cave and, and say that it is available there as well. Our collectors, too. I mean, th- these are these are books you want to keep your eye on for another reason. Mauricio, I mean, this this is his first work in in the comic industry, right. um, and and that's always something to to watch out for. Um, two three years down the road, Mauricio, uh, he he's. He, the path he's going, you, you, y'all have a, a heavyweight superstar uh, in y'all's stable right there. And in these first works of his, and that's going to be something to have too. So uh, that's that's also something to keep in mind. And that was one of my uh, big big things on nights. You know, that was that's his first his first baby right there, so to speak, too. You know, and uh, this honor and curse variant that that's that cover is by Mauricio as well. So that's uh. That's things to keep your uh, your your eyes on. Yeah, he's been killing it like from from day one. He's putting in so much work for this. Um, he he just he pretty much just wrapped up work on uh, Nights Issue Seven. Um, and he, we're we're gonna give him a nice little vacation before he starts on <laughs> more. He's, a, he's, he's, a, he's been killing himself. Uh, it's it's wild. Um, some of the pages he turns in, and yeah, we think we got a good group of artists from. From Battle Cats to Honor Curse to everything, and we we can't wait for you know to show you guys and show every reader like the art that we have coming up. So let me ask you because I am, if anyone has watched any of my videos, they know I butcher names. So the artist for Honor and Curse is it Nicolas Salamanca, or how do you how do you say that name? Yeah, uh, Nicolas Salamanca. Okay. So I wasn't that bad that time. That yeah, Nic- Nicholas, Nico. Yeah, it's a lot. It's it's you know. We he know looks. Like a, he looks like a fun guy too. He uh he looks like he has fun. <laughs> hey man, yeah, he, 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 yeah really, really, uh, really cool, and he uh he can do some unreal stuff with the the pen too. You know, for sure. So we we've, we've talked about Golden Sun. We've talked about Honor Curse. Huge successes. I really enjoyed Midnight Task Force before that, which I kind of got Volume One trade up behind me. Battle Cats before that was even good. What's on the horizon? What's coming up from Mad Cave? I know Battle Cats Volume Two is getting ready to come out, right? What else do we have that we can be looking forward to from Mad Cave? Right. So yeah, like you just said, uh, Volume Two, um, Battle Cats. That's sort of our next title to be released. Um, and like, like I'm telling you guys, it's a completely different book. It looks gorgeous. It looks so. It's so much fun. It's a really great book that we're excited to put out. Um, after that, it's gonna. There's gonna be a series. Um, actually, it's the first series uh, not written by Mark. I can't uh, quite announce it yet. There's still there's still a little bit more time before I can actually announce it. But it's uh, from one of our talent search winners. It's their first uh, comic being published, and it's our first um, doing one with the talent search winners. And looking out on the horizon later this later this year is gonna be. Just, it's going to be a lot more books from that game. We are we're really pushing our production to last year we only released three IPs and nights there was like only two issues of nights last year um this year we're pushing closer to 5 6 new IPs being released and we really can't wait for December when we're all dying of uh, overwork but we can't wait to push these books out and uh, seeing what you guys think basically I kind of have a question, especially with indie companies. Do you guys have a, I won't say, I won't even say working relationship, but are you guys close with any other like indie publishers? I know there's competition, but are you guys supportive of other people as well? Oh, not there's honest, honestly, I don't view any, anything as competition. I always think it's like, we're all, we're all here trying to make comics. We're all here living our dreams, 
like making comment like this is the most fun like we're, we're you know we're not too competing uh to grocery stores we're making comics here um and you and it's a great thing like at cons we just we just uh came back from emerald city about a month ago now and i we i talked to the vault guys and i think i think vault is doing amazing things i i, I love a fair amount of vault books um, and I, I talked to them and about their process and sort of like, and they knew about us. And I was like, oh, wait, what? You do about Knights and Honor and Curse? That is wild. We're still, we still think of ourselves as sort of um, the chip on the shoulder, up and coming kids. We're thinking ourselves as, uh, you know, we're part of this indie, um, sort of this indie scene that is now rising and growing and so many good books are being published. Um, we, yeah, we talked to uh, the TKO guys, the... Aftershock guys have always been cool to us. Um, all these, all these great indie companies doing great um, independent storytelling that um, we we were honor, really honored to be a part of. I think that's great to hear, especially coming from you. That's kind of why I asked the question: is you always you're always curious, like, and it's great to hear that everyone's kind of views it as a big family. You mentioned Emerald City. I kind of one of the questions I was gonna. I was going to save it for later, but since it's brought up, do you know what con, what your kind of 2019 Mad Cave con schedule looks like? Yeah, yeah. We, we uh, put it out. It's changed a bit, but our, we have Denver as our next con coming up. Then we have uh, Rose City, which is Portland. Um, after that, oh no, before that, we have Florida Supercon, uh, our hometown con, because um, that just got moved back to Miami. Um, then we have New York after that, and then right after New York, we have Baltimore. So I just want to let uh, Simple Men's Comics family and CBSI Nation know that uh, if you're enjoying the Indie Spotlight series show, if you're enjoying the content that ComicBookInvest.com is putting out there, we want to let you know that we as well will be hitting the conventions this year. Myself and Andy from the Indie Spotlight series will be at Heroes Con in Charlotte this June. We will be... Uh, getting a lot of content and we definitely want to meet you guys and Brian and I will be at Baltimore comic con in October as well. So we'll have to link up with Chris for sure then and come up with some sort of follow-up to this, to this piece right here. But um, we definitely want to let you guys know to come check us out at uh, future conventions where you will see CBSI represented for sure. That is a big part of our plans from 2019 going into 2020. I'm about to sneak to Baltimore after hearing all this. Dude, Baltimore's fun. Yeah. That's what I hear. Can't wait. They actually have a lot of comics at Baltimore too, which is which is refreshing compared to some cons. I like how there's a lot of publishers out there too, so it's a lot of a lot of good opportunity. That's honestly great to hear about Baltimore, because um, we, we might be dead because it's good. It's two weeks after New York, but uh, yeah. uh, but you know, and, and as long as it's a good show, it's a good show. Well, from a from a comic uh, buyer or you know one collector, yeah. it's good because normally. Baltimore is the week before New York mm -hmm. and you don't get as many deals. Cause they're just like, well, I'm gonna take my books to New York and get rid of them where now it's the, it's after New York comic con. So you might find some better deals when you're trying to buy comics saying they don't have that big con to go to next the, the week after. But you yeah. Dude, I, I bought so much at Seattle. This is not, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> That's good that y'all uh, be in the East coast doing a lot of the, the West coast shows too. I mean, is that by design to try and, Try and get get your product out there a little bit more. Get the word out there a little bit more, Chris. Yeah, it's it's huge. Uh, we're huge into like uh, making you know going to new markets, new new people. Like we know we're an East Coast uh, location, and but we know like there's a huge market, um, especially an indie market in Seattle and Portland, right. um, that we that we would love to be. And that's a, they're they're awesome cities and awesome people. Like Seattle was great. Um, so I can't wait for Portland. We need to get you guys to Heroes Con in Charlotte. It's a it's a great place for independent comics. Yeah, no doubt. We yeah, there's been talk about North Carolina. Yeah, I, I, there's there's been talks. There's 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 a lot of cons. That's a close one. That's not even. I, well, I say close. Twelve hours, thirteen hours. <laughs> yeah, you're you're right, but you know. <laughs> yeah, no. Is Mark gonna be at Baltimore? Uh, I don't know. Gotcha. I'm not not totally sure. Mark's schedule is uh, the I I literally have to bounce around for with his schedule all the time, uh, planning stuff for him. Because uh, is yeah. Mauricio? Uh, the the hard thing about getting artists, um, 
Is this commission uh, list open? <laughs> <laughs> the hard thing about getting artists um, to shows here is that they're Colombian artists, they're international oh, yeah. artists, so it's it's tough even to get like you know signatures for the, or I get stuff signed. It's it's tough to like be like, okay, we gotta uh, take them over there and then we have to ship them back. It's it's um it's a hard thing to do like they're uh, they're obviously fantastically talented and we, we wouldn't have it any other way but it's like man is it hard to, for them to do signings or get them to cons chris i wanted to know uh you know we talked about how we've really enjoyed our relationship with mad cave and especially working with you in specific how has been the cbsi relationship worked for you guys how have you guys felt about it Oh, you guys have been awesome from jump. You guys were talking about nights when, you know, when, when we, you know, you guys talk about nights because you see it in the sort of in the public eye and or sort of like with your readers. Um, but you also, you know, you wrote articles on it and anyone who writes anything about anything we do, uh, that's time that you guys devoted to it. And, you know, that's a free, I, I know how hard it is to, you know, spend uh, spend 30 minutes every day uh, writing about comics, it's, especially when you have a million other things to do. Blown away. It's, and when we started working together on variants and different things, we were, I, I was shocked because, you know, my job is uh, communicating with people through email and social media. And sometimes people are uh, not readily available at, at most times um or take you know a couple of days to respond and that's you know that's just life life gets in the way like that but you guys have always been on point and always come with ideas that make stuff work and uh, can be beneficial for both of us you guys have been killing it really well we're very we're very appreciative because as we've talked about you guys have actually kicked off our variant program we've released some variants in the past under the old ownership but there are two variants through Medcave. Those are the first two variants on our new variant program that we are now trying. We're aiming to release a variant a month. And, um, you know, we've been very happy with, with that relationship. And I think it's really the standard that will be set this week coming up on the uh, Bolo Show Live. We will be announcing our newest variant in our variant program. So we're excited to, to talk about that. But uh, I think really the relationship with Medcave has really set the standard for what, what going forward that we will be doing with our variants. And, and we really hope to come back and work with Mad Cave again in the future. I think it's really been a, a real beneficial relationship for, for both entities. For sure. For sure. I mean, yeah, we, we did this variance because, you know, Andy actually came to us with the idea and we were like, yeah, let's do it. I mean, we have art. Uh, we have, you know, yeah, I can't, uh, Jack, Jack came to me. He's like, Hey, what, what do you think? What do you think? I said, well, I got somebody we can ask, and yeah. uh, <laughs> I think it happened like a Friday night. I'm sure when I when we asked, you were probably like, "What in the heck?" But uh, you 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 got yeah. on. It was a quick turnaround too. <laughs> right. like, you, that was that was good, man. I mean, it, it's it's things like that though that that make it happen. And the all access hours. I mean, that was probably at ten o'clock at night. I think when that thing yeah. jumped off like that. So uh, it's uh, it, it's been a pleasure, man. And I uh, like I say, I. Uh, I, I can't I can't believe how um how 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 big and how how much this thing has grown over uh over the last couple months. It's uh it's it's great to see, and I I couldn't be happier for y'all. Yeah, so going forward, what will you be looking for in whether it's retail shops or websites in the future when you create these relationships for for variants for different uh, companies and stores? Um, that's that's a good question because we are um. I we're always uh, we're working with retailers very closely, especially now we have a dedicated uh, retailer uh, sort of outreach um, with Manny. Manny is uh, sort of the newest member of Mad Cave, and he's been killing it with retailers and being on top and being and talking to retailers and making sure like, oh, you guys got shorted, you guys got shorted. Well, we got books. Here we go. Let's see what we can do here. Um, and we have we have a, we have interest for uh, store exclusive variants, and we're I mean from that we you know transparency is always important, especially when it comes to variants and um, how that reflects on um, us and not just us, but like as the retailers um, can trust us and that we're going to be transparent with them, be hundred with them, and making sure any mis I love that answer. Yeah, and it, making sure any miscommunication gets resolved as fast as possible, and be like, okay, like there's there's a problem here. Let's try to fix it as fast as possible. Let's try to make make compromise and see where we can make stuff work. Um, and 
besides that, it's just like make a make a product and make make covers and make things that are cool and stuff that I want to put on my shelf. You know, that, like these CVSI variants, I I love them. I I think they're great, and I you know I I snagged some for me, um, and that. that that's all we really want to do. All we really want to do is make books that we want to read and make variants that we want to own. Let's say for people out there watching, if there's any stores or anyone else that aren't sure how to, if say it's a retailer or someone wanted to make, do a variant with Mad Cave, what would be the steps that they needed to take or, or who would they need to get a hold of or how would that process work? Besides um, DM, slipping in the DMs on Instagram. And, oh. <laughs> Besides oh, no. that. I mean, you can always do that. I yeah. am, I am, I am on the DMs, uh, basically twenty four seven sometimes. Um, so yeah, reach out, reach out through social media is very easy. Um, we have uh, an email on our on our site, a uh, contact at Matt Cave Studios. Um, that that'll get that'll get your that'll get uh, whatever email on eyes. Um, if you ask for Manny directly through that email, um, uh, Manny Castellanos. Um, he he'll hook you up right away with uh, he's retailer guy he handles all of that um at, at if you contact any one of us at Mad Cave or any channels at Mad Cave we'll we'll work it out and we'll get you right in touch with the people who you need to talk to awesome i can't say that y'all are y'all are like i try and reach out to a bunch of publishers and you guys are by far the, the easiest, most accessible company there is. I mean, and I don't get it because I, I'm doing nothing but trying to help some of these people, guys, and they it's like their social media is just non-existent. And uh, you guys, I think you're you're definitely leaps and, and bounds ahead of the game. Yeah, and that's something that I you know I pride myself in in my work um, to be um, constantly responding to people, constantly looking to, you know, looking at comments and um, responding to people who leave comments. Cause I, again, like I don't leave a comment on every post that I like. Um, so the fact that you did, I want to make sure that that's heard and, or, or, you know, that it's seen. It was a long work. Yeah. Because it takes it like, it's not work obviously, but it's like it, you took time out of your day. You took the time out of your day to leave a comment on this comic thing, really? Uh, thank you. I try to, I try to make it, you know, make it one of my goals to like engage with that person or, you know, seek out that person or uh, be available for anyone who's trying to reach out to us. So, speaking of social, for the viewers, where can they find you? What what platforms are you on? Uh, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit at. Oh, basically everything at Mac Cave Studios or slash Mac Cave Studios. Um, our website, uh, MacCaveStudios.com has all our social links there. How many cell phones do you have? Just one? I just have one, but it, there's a lot of notifications, guys. It just shows, though, going out of your way to, to accommodate those people that are, I mean, each one is DMing them to try and get them a book or, or get them at least to their LCS to get them the book. I mean, uh, that's, that's, that's dedication. That's building a company. We are, we want we want to be success. Uh, we want to we want to put books in people's hands. That's first, you know. That's what we try to do, and every, every little bit helps. And we're we're proud to see that um, that hard work is paying off now at this point. And let's you know we're all all trying to keep it going. So since I have you here, Chris, we do I have a little lightning round. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions, um, kind of multiple choice, this or that, and then you just answer which one. You'd prefer first question would be Jim Lee or Todd McFarlane. Oh, Todd McFarlane. All right. Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo Switch. Uh, PlayStation guy, through through. Right, right. Uh, I have all of my kids love the Switch, but I end up playing more PlayStation myself. Supernatural or Charmed? Uh, I I haven't seen either. Oh my um, god. Okay. Um, MCU or DC movies? DCU. Oh, so it's, it's movies. Okay. Um, yeah, I know DCU. I'm talking about. I think hands down, DCU has it. Um, TV, but yeah, movies. Uh, just movies. Yeah, I don't have to go Marvel though. I I am loving what DC is doing. Yeah. Um, now. All right, two more for you. Okay. And you can't say you can't answer all of them. 
on okay. this question. Okay. Favorite Mad Cave title? Uh, oh, uh, right now, Honor and Curse. I like Honor and Curse a lot. I thought you were gonna name one of those ones that's not out yet and give us a give us a clue. <laughs> no, no, I can't Good do problem. it. I can't do it. A tricky, tricky question. Yeah. All right, so, Battle Cats Volume Two is up there as well. I will tell you that, but I haven't seen enough of that. But it, Honor and Curse is is probably my favorite. Before I ask the last question, when is the first issue of the next Battle Cats Volume hitting stores? That's a May 29th. Last question. It started this past Sunday. At the end of the season, who ends up on the throne in Game of Thrones? Uh, geez, uh, Danny. Who's the character you you hate the most on that show? Oh, jeez. Like, so but love to hate. You know what I'm saying? There's always this character. Like Cersei's one of those ones that's just like, ah, but yeah, yeah, probably Cersei, just because yeah, she says some she says some stuff, and I'm like, geez, Cersei, I, I know you, but. You're an evil person. Yeah, she's like the Ric Flair of Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally the heel that everyone like. yeah. It's super watchable, but you're still like, ugh, yeah. stop. So yeah, that so that's gonna end the lightning round. Jack, Andy, you guys have anything else for Chris? Oh man, I just want to say uh thank you for coming on, Chris. I uh I I look forward to doing more uh stuff on Mad Cave in the future and uh just want to say, keep doing what you're doing, man. Stay, uh, stay true to it, and uh, I think there's big things to come. Yeah, I, I want, I want to reiterate Andy's uh, sentiments. I want to thank Chris for being here, taking the time to join us. Um, I want to thank him for all that he's done to kind of give us information for the site, so that you know we can, we can keep readers informed on what's going on with Mad Cave. It is absolutely no pump and dump. As you can see, we're talking about quality books, quality products, and quality people. So I really, I really want to put the bolo out there for all of you. You know, keep an eye out for those uh, Battle Cats Volume One books that are sitting in a lot of bins and and on shelves that could see an uptick when Volume Two hits. So definitely be on the lookout for that. And again, thank you, Chris, for uh, taking the time and uh, talking with us today on the very first episode of the Indie Spotlight Series show. I myself can't thank you enough. I know we've talked through back and forth. Um, definitely glad when you said, hey, I'd love to, if you guys want to have me on your show, by all means, that'd be great. I know you're taking time out of your day. I know you're always busy as well. I think the viewers, as well as me, I mean, I learned a lot more about Mad Cave tonight as well, just talking specifically to you. And I think it was a great conversation. I think a lot, lets a lot of the people, a lot of the viewers on this channel, a lot of readers out there know, Jack said, the quality of product. I can sit here and talk about it all day long. But when other people start talking about it as well and see that, oh, it's not just one man's opinion. There's actually quality product there with good stories, great writers, great artists. Um, you guys are only going to go up from there. And like I said, I really appreciate you coming on, Chris. I got one more thing. So, I, I, Chris, if you can give them the hashtag again. Okay, yeah, uh, the hashtag, uh, comments with a mad twist. Comments with a mad twist. So if everybody goes and puts in the comments on the video after the premiere on the actual video, Hashtag comics with a mad twist. You're going to be entered to win one of our honor and curse variants, the CBSI exclusive, and we will choose one winner um, amongst all the uh, entrants. So all you got to do is put hashtag comics with a mad twist on this video, and you will be entered to win one of those exclusive variants from CBSI and Mad Cave Studios. Right. And we will let you know that we do have, we have some giveaway on, on Simple Man's Comics channel. We have something to give away on the CBSI Bolo show. That's every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, we're going to have some for Facebook, some a couple for any of our social platforms as well. Um, Test one Flipside podcast. So be on the lookout for those as well. But yeah, like he said, put that hashtag in the comment on this video. Make sure you're not doing it. If you're watching the premiere, don't put it in the live chat. Make sure it's a comment on the actual video. And like he said, we'll pick one winner that will get a copy of that. And if you ordered it already, um, if you're one of the initial people who put in that order, the books have shipped. So you should be getting them any day now. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they went out Tuesday, the, Tuesday, the April 9th is when they were shipped. So, Chris, before we go, man, the floor is yours. Any, any message you want to put out about Mad Cave, anything you want to say, by all means, uh, you got it. Spotlight's on you. Thank you guys for having me. This is an awesome conversation, awesome talk, um, um, and really got you know really got some cool uh, information out there, and really you know, just talking about Mad Cave and comics, you know, some two yeah. favorite things. Uh, and yeah, um, I mean, no, uh, well, like um, well, I just said uh, this week, 
it would be Knights of the Golden Sun number six and uh, Knights number one, a second printing. Head head to your local comic shop of you know that they're probably gonna go fast, <laughs> so we probably should get there. Um, next week is gonna be Honor Curse number three. Go into your local comic shop and you know go, talk to your local comic shop. Tell them hey, um, what's Matt Cave got going on? What's uh, what's his next book coming out? With uh, we have Battle Cats uh, Volume Two um, in solicitations right now. Um, so you know talk to the local comic shop. Tell them oh hey, have you heard of Matt Cave? You know just. Really, really just strike up uh, a relationship, uh, not only with your uh, retailer um, that messages us on social media, you know, to talk to us. We were always open for any conversations about comics or our, our comics, whatever. We're, we're here to not just sell comics. We're here to build community and build people and build, the, build this uh, group of people that are comfortable and, you know, safe talking about just comics or whatever you know we're all here we're all nerds we're all here just trying to you know be cool with each other and live in this fantasy world of comics so again chris really appreciate having you on and also if you guys want to see more videos like this the any spotlight show we will have andy jack myself maybe we can even have chris on again at some other time in the future to bring us bring him back and talk about Matt cave but if we reach out and get other indie publishers as well we always want to bring attention to those books because we all love indie titles here. So if you guys want to see more, comment down below, let us know. And with that, Chris, like I said, really appreciate you having, having you on, taking the time out, and uh, wish you guys all the success. I know you guys will continue to get my money because I love your titles. And uh, with that, I'll say good night, guys. Take it easy. Night. Thank you. Make sure you like and subscribe.